Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics, and I'm here with Laura McIntyre. Uh, I've spoken with you in Flint many times. You're a resident, uh, definitely an activist uh, ever since this uh, water contamination crisis uh, began. And, you know, on the surface, I read good news this weekend, uh, $100 million granted to Flint. Uh, Trump's EPA is get credit, credit for it, what's left of the EPA. Um, but you and I were talking offline and it's kind of, uh, something that was pretty much already planned that money and you're kind of suspect on its, on its actual results. Can you talk about the hundred million that's coming and what your thoughts are? Well, the hundred million was actually what was passed in December. It was that, that, that stuff that we were trying to work on and it started off as 176 million. So it's been reduced to a hundred, um, and I think the biggest concern, I mean, there's a lot of factors involved with that, but the biggest concern for Flint families, Flint residents, is that it's mediated by the state. It's, it's So we have to be partners with the governor and with the state of Michigan um, to allocate the funds and to see that it gets dis, you know, dispersed where it's, where it's going to go. Um, and that's kind of like having, you know, to deal with, your um a rape trial with your own rapist so we're not really happy that that we have to collude and collaborate with governor snyder because he hasn't done anything in the past and in fact he's been very obstructionist so um he has a say in where all that money is going if the money actually ends up getting here you know in the first place and also uh snyder and many republican governors and democrats you know, there's a history of money coming from the federal government, uh, the, the governor and the state having control, and then suddenly that money is dispersed to contractors and new pet projects that uh, the state favors uh, instead of what it was earmarked for. Is that a concern in this case? Yeah, correct. And at this point, it looks like the money is going to go to upgrade the water plant, which has been neglected and just abused like for the past you know 20 to 30 years so while that is a good start to where money needs to go it's not necessarily where the flint crisis water relief money needs to go i mean that's just structural every city should be maintaining their water plant and that's there's another background story about you know what happened with those funds um but at this point even if our water system is upgraded to the point where it meets standards and you know meets the EPA regulations, the pipes in the homes, the service lines have not been replaced. So we're not going to get adequate water, clean or safe water, no matter what the water plant looks like. Right. And that's the fundamental issue because, you know, Scott Smith, who you know well, um, he basically has said, you know, Jesus can bless the water at the at the water plant and it could be as pure as possible. But if it's then being dispersed, distributed in corroded pipes with lead lodging into the water, it doesn't matter how great the water plant is. It's really the service lines. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, all of the homes need the pipes replaced. They have to be replaced. They can't be coated. You know, we, they can't be flushed. They all need to be replaced. The harm has been done, and the harm is incalculable. And we're talking about the pipes, let alone people's health, you know, other things that have been damaged, the emotional scarring that's happened. Um, the pipes have to be replaced. I, and so far, there's just absolutely no talk about that. I mean, except for maybe a, a handful of homes. And uh, just to remind the audience, if they haven't seen our interviews, I mean, your family, like the thousands of others, You've had rashes, you've had nosebleeds, um, all, sort, all sorts of problems. And, Hair loss, yeah. And your house, you still can't drink the water. And I think that's the fundamental issue because the media, because it's obsessed with Trump and everything else, they just kind of go with these headlines from the EPA. So the EPA, in conjunction with Virginia Tech, will say, oh, new tests show Flint's lead, uh, lead testing under the allowable limit for lead. And then they just chalk it up to Flint is fixed. Can, can you explain the current state, how it is nowhere, nowhere close to fixed? Well, allowable limit 
for one thing, it's 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 an arbitrary limit that's you know been created by the lead industry itself. I mean, the allowable limit is zero, um, and at this point, not all houses have been tested. So, how can they say that you know every house meets that allowable limit? And it's the testing that is done is is just a snapshot in time. So it pretty much is giving you a assessment of what your water looks like at that moment. And as we know, as you just mentioned yourself and what Scott Smith has talked about uh, among many other people is that we have uh, lead buildup in the pipes that could become dislodged. So it doesn't matter if your water is safe one minute, the next minute you could have lead coming through the pipes. And, also um, and it's also, we're also really worried about uh, Legionnaires, Legionella, Shigellosis, um, bacteria, uh, the chemicals, the TTHM. So it's not just lead. So to, to, to make the standard, you know, a certain number of, you know, parts per billion for lead is not adequate. There are many other things that are wrong with the water, with the pipes. And also, as Scott has shown, you know, we've done some testing in East Chicago. He's done testing in Flint. The EPA, the, the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, they're not testing the shower water for the most part. So, right. you know, they're very focused on the, the tap water, but whether it's bacteria, chloroform, things I can't pronounce, you don't know what you're shower. You don't know what you're showering and nobody does. And that's not discussed in the media. Correct. And that's that's very worrisome. People are having respiratory problems, illnesses. Um, I think the the total count now is 18 that have died from Legionnaires disease, which they finally have admitted is linked to the water, um, and that's just what's been reported. Um, we're very very concerned because none of that has been addressed. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed, and if not, it's getting worse. And have you seen anything from from Sna Governor Snyder other than you know the the criminal act in the first place? Because I watched his State of the Union or State of the State. I think it had two minutes on Flint, kind of towards the middle or end. Sounded like lip service platitudes. Uh, I know he changed a pipeline, uh, changed some pipes very quickly in Ann Arbor, where he lives. Um, but I have not seen this this fast program. Uh, there's still fast track, fast track, which was supposed to be changing home pipes quick quickly. Uh, as far as I know, you tell me if I'm wrong. There's been not even five to ten percent of the pipes changed at this point oh gosh no no it's not even close now to be to be clear the fast track program is a program under mayor weaver mayor weaver is not governor snyder and in fact is you know trying to make hold him accountable for the damage that's been done now it's her fast track program would be like us the the citizens of flint paying for snyder's mistakes so while we do need to have our pipes fixed and, and fixed and fixed as quickly as possible so that, you know, we can just live with the water, it's, it's kind of letting Snyder off the hook. Mm -hmm. He needs to pay for what he has broken. He needs to, to fix what is broken. He needs to, um, to be held accountable for the, for the poison in the water. Um, and so the, the fast track program has has maybe helped a couple hundred houses. It's really hard to keep track of the exact number. Um, it's inflated, and and frankly, a lot of us don't believe the numbers um, that are being reported. Um, and it, and it's just not adequate. Snyder is the one that needs to step up and and pay for what he's broken. And can I ask you because last time I was there was around Christmas time. And it was unbelievable to me that they were just in bulk sending these uh, water shutoff notices. In some cases, if you don't pay your water bill, you you know you're going to be evicted. Uh, are are you still is Flint uh, as a whole still seeing high water bills and threats that if you don't pay the water bill, you're going to be evicted? Yes, yes. And in fact, this week we're very worried about evictions. Um, about water shutoffs and water evictions, and we're trying to mobilize people to um, to help folks who uh, actually have water shutoff occurring at their homes. We were threatened by the city that it will be happening this week, so we're like I said, we're mobilizing uh, water shutoff teams to help people um, 
you know, so that they aren't kicked out of their homes. They don't have the water shut off. So they don't have their children taken from them uh, by DPS. So we're very, very concerned. And it was so disingenuous, those those letters that were sent before Christmas, two days before Christmas, December 23rd, um, threatening that we had to pay our water bills or else we wouldn't be getting the the water credits that were coming from the federal government and the states because the, those ended anyway and they knew that those credits were ending. So the threats were, were very disingenuous and meant purely for intimidation because now those that... Um, those water credits have ended and we're back up paying the the high water prices that we were paying, you know, before the, the, the ruling came in. Uh, you know, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Obviously, it's opinion, but in a lot of Flint and East Chicago, I speak with a lot of people who basically feel that these attempts uh, to force people out, things like that, are a kind of subtle way of gentrifying, you know, kicking poor people out of the community after poisoning them, uh, hopefully enough that you could bulldo- bulldoze, you know, low income, decrepit housing and start moving some yuppies in. Uh, do you do you do you do you do you worry about that in Flint? Absolutely. I think that we are uh, our situation is very similar to Detroit in terms of the land bank um, and what is being done with um, foreclosures. Uh under the auspices of blight elimination. Um, what does that mean? You know, so what this, does that this, mean, blight elimination? Blight elimination means, you know, let's paint the houses, get rid of the graffiti, pick up some of the trash, make everything look okay. Uh, not fix the pipes. You know, you can't see pipes, so we're not going to fix those. But make everything look nice um, so that we actually don't have to do anything. That's, that's my take on blight elimination. Um, and I don't think it's been very subtle at all, I think the the Flint um, uh, planning for the for the city is actually called the master plan, and we kind of refer to it colloquially here as the master's plan. Uh, it really is the idea of getting poor people out of the city, um, forcing them out, foreclosing on the homes uh, because of water liens, tax liens. Our houses are still over assessed um, for way more than their market value, and this was. You know, this happened even before the water crisis. So we're paying very high taxes. Um, we have tax redlining, uh, insurance redlining. So we're paying much more for these services for, for a lot less uh, than, than you know, people who live in the outskirts uh, are getting. And, my last question, and it's by design. My last question, you know, is broader than Flint. Uh, I'm sure you saw recently Reuters was out with a story really in depth but that like 3,000 cities have actual worse lead numbers than Flint or comparable uh, lead and other things. And there's crickets, you know, the media barely covers it. It's it, 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 unless there's a crisis and, you know, you see a young kid crying for, you know, in a photo op, it doesn't seem they come in as somebody who has gone through this nightmare. I've been in your home. I mean, I, I honestly feel for you and feel for the people there. What do you want viewers to know? Because a lot of the viewers watching, you know, we take it for granted, but there's a lot of communities that you have no idea what's in your water or in your air. Uh, Correct. How, how should people, or soil. Or soil. How should people kind of mobilize for themselves in their communities with these numbers uh, in other cities? Well, you, you need to be aware that this is a national public health crisis. Um, it doesn't matter how much money you make or where you live or, you know, what race you are. It's water is, uh, you can't segregate water. So this is a problem that decades of neglect to our infrastructure, to pollution have, have caused. And Flint is just a microcosm of this. this. We happen to be the perfect storm of all the things that would make you know, something come to a head like this, but make no mistake that it's it's coming to your community as well. Water is the next, you know, civil rights movement. Um, Nestle is trying to take the Great Lakes water. It's trying to privatize it. The public um, water systems are, uh, people have their eye on those and they're trying to privatize those to uh, make money. Um, CEOs of corporations have, have publicly stated that water is not a human right. Um, 
and and like you said it's in the air as well it's in the soil um uh, this is a crisis that is going to hit every single community you know if not right now then then very very soon and i also think it ties in you and i have spoken in the past it ties in with the overall de-investment in these communities you know flint Mm -hmm used to be one of the beacons of the middle class. Um, Michael Moore has uh, depicted that in documentaries. Uh, And then they started sending the jobs overseas and letting the buildings and the factories and the neighborhoods kind of go to shit. And then uh, obviously uh, lower income people move in. So it kind of goes hand in hand with the last 30, 40 years uh, uh, economically. Correct. I mean, it, this is a de-investment in human beings and human lives. I mean, this is what happens when you have um, the concentration of wealth and capital in the hands of a few, you know, leaving nothing for the rest of humanity. And you have to have people who are doing the work. I mean, what do they think is going to happen when you don't pay labor or, you know, even make it so that the people, the, the, the common working people can't afford to live, they, that they don't have a place to, they don't have a place to live, they don't have enough to eat, they're being poisoned by water. Um, we found out in the 70s that lead is, is a crisis. Uh, it causes neurological damage, it causes people to be aggressive and angry, and we're starting to live in a world where we have a lot of aggressive, hungry, angry homeless, cold, starving people. So this is, you know, this is our, the world we live in and the crisis that we're, that we're having to deal with right now. Thanks as always for taking the time. And uh, my next trip there, I'm sure we'll see each other again. I hope so. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks.